Welcome to Podcasting Smarter, the podcast for podcasters by podcasters. Podcasting Smarter is the official podcast from Podbean, featuring podcasting interviews, best practices, and helpful tips. We're here to give you the tools, resources, product updates, and news to help you get started podcasting and keep your podcast growing. Welcome to another episode of Podcasting Smarter. I'm Norma Jean Belenke, and today we're delving into podcast monetization. Learn how to turn your passion into profit with Podbean's free Podbean Academy resources. We'll be discussing a unique monetization method that's often overlooked, but that can be highly effective. Don't miss out on this insider tip that could transform your podcasting journey. Stay tuned, and here we go. Hi, John. How's it going? Hello, it's going well. And as per usual, the introduction of what we're talking about today is one of my favorite topics. I have a lot of favorite topics. If you haven't noticed, we're going to be talking all about how to make money with your podcast and talk about monetizing your show. A question we get asked fairly frequently, a thing that often seems very mystifying to lots of people. But once you understand some of the strategies and some of the tools, I think you'll find that it can really work for you no matter what level of podcaster you are. Yeah, absolutely. What are the key strategies for monetizing a podcast that Podbean Academy really covers and teaches? So within Podbean Academy, you'll find a variety of resources on the tools that we provide at Podbean, such as Apple Podcast Subscriptions, our Patreon account, our live streaming platform, advertising, all of these different pieces. But I think even more than that, again, the tool is just as effective as the person running it. So the thing we want to think about is within Podbean Academy, creating strategies to let people know where they can find your content. And when they're looking to spend money on your content, what are considerations that you need to come up with in order to make those successful? So for example, one of the things we talk about in Podbean Academy is the new Apple podcast subscriptions, this tool where you can now release content and put it behind a paywall on Apple podcasts. So when someone is searching for your show, if there's content that you have, for example, bonus content, ad free content, whatever the case may be, people can go ahead and purchase that. And you obviously are receiving the income for that. It's a great tool. How is your podcast going to leverage it? That's the big question that we help you try to establish and answer your specific use for that may be different than what mine is or somebody else's. You may have bonus content that you can provide you may not your content may be ad free versus not ad free. There's a variety of different considerations in there within Podbean Academy, we help you dissect and figure out what's going to work best for you in each of these monetization tool strategies. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's so many ways to monetize a podcast. And it's important to look at each strategy and each tool for monetization in consideration of your overall podcast, your audience, what you're already doing, like you said, if you have ads on your podcast already or not subscription models, if you have a podcast for your business, and there's so many factors there. Can you share some examples of how Podbean's resources have helped podcasters successfully monetize their shows? Let's talk about some examples. Certainly. So the big thing for me when it comes to, okay, what podcasters have made money or anything like that, first and foremost thing is a lot of podcasters, while there are a lot that think about monetizing, there are a lot that haven't thought about monetizing up front. I just got off a call with a customer that was saying, what can I do to take my podcast to the next level? And they were talking about what they're putting into their show in terms of all these different resources, what money they're putting into the show. And one thing I asked them is, well, what monetization revenues do you currently have on your show? And you know, how is your show structured? And they're like, Oh, well, we're not making any money from the show right now. I'm like, well, what tools would you use? And their answer was, I don't really know what tools are available. So we talked about some of the things that were available on their plan. And now they're running a weekly live stream where people can donate to them. And again, live streaming on our platform is free to use, you get about two hours or so on any one of our plans. And as you continue to live stream, you get more. But the case in point is, they already had an audience that was fairly large, again, about seven or 8,000 downloads a month, they automatically started putting that live stream in, and people were coming to their show on the Podbean app and donating to them during it. And they were like, Oh, this is great. What else can we do to monetize from there? The other thing I was saying was in your live stream, go ahead and give incentives for people to donate at different tiers, shout people out at different tiers, say their comments, like very much the YouTube super chat kind of vibe. And you'd be surprised what kind of traffic they were able to get from that you were talking about 
over probably about a 15 to 20% jump is what they had told me they had seen from not mentioning it to all of a sudden bringing it up. And then we could talk about all of the different podcasts on our platform that are really taking advantage of programmatic advertising and dynamically inserted ads. We had podcasters that have been with us for a while that they're saying, hey, I'm not making the revenue goals that I want to make. We're like, well, you signed up for ads marketplace. Well, no. Okay, cool. Sign up and let's start there. Right. <laughs> you got to be part of the game to play it, right? With this, they were able to sign up. And because of the traffic, because of the numbers, because of their geotargeting, we've had a lot of our podcasters who have started to take advantage of programmatic ads. So literally publishing a show and being on ads marketplace has been able to help generate them a good amount of income per month. And that's growing over time. One thing I will also say about monetization, consider not just I need to make money with my show, but think about upfront when you're starting to monetize, what could that cover? Because even getting a little bit of money upfront from programmatic advertising could cover your hosting costs. It could cover you doing a marketing monthly budget. It can cover a variety of different things. And I think sometimes we get caught up in I'm not making a lot or I need to be making this when in reality upfront when you're just starting to monetize, one of the big pieces is where is this going to go? If you're getting your hosting covered, that's great. And you know, you can only grow over time if you keep up the momentum and keep growing. And then you could figure out what else it's going to pay for over time. So definitely seeing lots of success there. Yeah, absolutely. And I also love the example of a lot of podcasters out there that just learning about monetization, but have deep catalogs, right? Like seasons, yes. years deep of episodes. And so for every podcaster out there who thought, oh, I should have monetized earlier, you can serve fresh ads on those old episodes, especially the really popular ones are going to bring in that revenue now. So don't feel like you missed out. That's a really important aspect. One thing I want to bring up about that too, because you talked about the back catalog and you really need to be looking at your back catalog for monetization purposes. With our pod ad system, you can also geotarget your ads too. And now we just released a new prioritization for ads where let's say you're running an ad from an advertiser for a certain couple of weeks, and then you have a new advertiser who wants that same time slot, you can still have those same ads run at the same time slot. But now you can have one go after the other and change the order and the priority. So it's basically like with our ads platform, you can bring in new advertisers, you can geo target where those ads are going to run. And you can prioritize them based on the deals that you have set up with those advertisers. So there's so much flexibility in terms of you being able to make money with your show through the advertising side, that literally just hitting that join ads marketplace button and running ads and doing all that stuff is so powerful right now. And it's never a better time to be making money as a podcaster. Yeah, absolutely. Well, John, we're almost done today. But I want to ask you the real important question in terms of value for today's episode. What are some unique monetization opportunities that podcasters often overlook? I'll say this. With a strategy towards monetization, the live streaming one for me has always been massive because it serves two purposes. It serves the purpose of in the moment engaging with your audience, which in turn can inspire a bit of impulse buying and impulse purchase. So that's something that I always think gets very overlooked in the industry of podcasting. And it's something that is coming more into the world of podcasting, more from like the video world, because you see it a lot in different mediums, but that is ducktailing back into podcasting now. One thing I will also say that does get overlooked is putting your stuff behind a subscription base. You know, you have a lot of podcasters who see the medium of podcasting, and they see it as a free medium and the content they're putting out. That's all well and good. But at the same time, if you have a way to monetize your show and you have content that you can put behind a paywall and that is exclusive enough that people would want to purchase it for that, you're missing out on a big opportunity to have your audience help support you while creating content that gives them even more engagement and more connection to your show as their dedicated audience. So those would be two that I say really get underlooked from a serving perspective. The other thing that I will say is I think a lot of podcasters don't take enough advantage of things like PayPal donations or coffee donations or things like that. It's not a tool that we necessarily offer as of right now. But because you have a podcast website with Podbean, you can put an embeddable button on there and then go in your show and say, hey, donate here. And there are lots of successful podcasters who do that. But it's something that is also fairly low maintenance for you to do. Just asking somebody, hey, if you want to support the show, go here and donate, create some incentives for that. I think that using those kinds of buttons is very underutilized. And I think if more podcasters were doing that, 
even at a couple of people donating to you per month. Again, it covers your hosting costs and gives you even a small marketing budget that you can use to grow your show. So it's not a tool that we provide, but it is something that I think if podcasters implement it more can be massively successful because it has a proven track record. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's something where every little bit counts. You know, we all have these big goals in mind, but you start somewhere. And so it's important to honor every dollar as it comes in and get excited about it. And there are so many strategies out there. Thank you so much for sharing those today. And we've got so much more for you at Podbean's Podbean Academy. So we'll have the link here for you in the show notes. Thanks, John. Of course. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Podcasting Smarter. If you have any podcasting questions or want to get in touch, send us an email at podcastingsmarter at podbean.com. Thanks so much and happy podcasting. <laughs>